إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طبتم وطاب ممشاكم وتبوأتم من الجنة منزلة نسأل الله جل جلاله أن يجمعنا في ظل عرشه يوم لا ظل إلا ظله كما جمعنا على طاعته في هذه الدار إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه ثم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he untie any knots in my tongue so, so that I might be understood in the proper way that I want to present this subject to you or to all of us listen. Yaqulu al-Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and the title of our khutbah is going to be Under the Shade of the Throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نسأل الله من فضله قلوا آمين في ظل العرش يقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام سبعة يظلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله الأول إمام عادل الثاني شاب نشأ في طاعة الله الثالث رجل قلبه معلق بالمساجد وفي رواية في المساجد فور ورجلان تحاب في الله اجتمع على حبه وتفرق عليه الخامس رجل دعته امرأة ذات منصب وجمال فقال إني أخاف الله السادس رجل تصدق بصدقة فأخفاها حتى لا تعلم يمينه ما أنفقت أو تعلم شماله ما أنفقت يمينه والسادس أو السابع عفوا والأخير رجل ذكر الله خاليا in the Prophet ﷺ, in this hadith, he said seven types or categories of people will be under the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day where there is no shade other than the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said the first one is a just ruler. And I will explain as we go. Number two, a young man or young person who grew up worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young person who grew up since they were young kids, they grew up worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning they did not make tawbah after 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and 60, 70 and 80 or enter into Islam at a late age. Number three, رجل قلبه معلق في المساجد A man who his heart is attached to the masajid Meaning he wants to come and he loves to come and pray with the jama'ah at the masjid Whenever there's an event at the masjid he comes to the masjid ورجل قلبه معلق في المساجد أو بالمساجد Number four, two men and this could be men or women, two, two persons in many things in Arabic that apply to the men, they automatically apply to the women. And two men, they love each other for the sake of Allah. I don't love you because I want your daughter or I don't want you to marry my son. I love you for the sake of Allah. I saw you at the masjid, I said, Akhi, I love you for the sake of Allah. A sister saw another sister at the masjid, she said, I love you for the sake of Allah. I don't want to have any benefit from our relationship except that we Love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And two men or two women or two persons love each other for the sake of Allah. 
Number five, Rajulun, a man, and this only pertains to the men, but in some circumstances, if it happens to women as well. But the men have more fitna, they have more fitna when it comes to a woman who has status and who has beauty. And a man who is called by a beautiful woman of status, meaning she has nufud, she has, she's a ruling woman, she has strength in her community financially or in status and she is beautiful and the man says I fear Allah meaning she called him in haram and he said I fear Allah I cannot do this number six is a person who gives a sadaqah with the right hand to the point that the left hand does not know what the right hand has given, meaning the ultimate secrecy. So it's not the hand that knows, it's the brain. You already know how much you have given. But this is a metaphor to show how much this person gave for the sake of Allah in secret. That he gives it in such secrecy that even the left hand does not know what the right hand gives. It's a metaphor for extreme secrecy and uh, keeping it to himself. Number seven. Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliyan fafaadat aynah. And I'm going to elaborate more on this last one. At the end, a man or a woman, a person who remembers Allah when they are alone. And they start to weep and their eyes start to water in tears. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are from amongst these seven that will be under the shade of the throne of Allah on the day there is no shade other than the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith, I'm just going to pause a little bit that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whomsoever plays with rocks, and today's rock could be your cell phone, that they have committed speech, and whomsoever commits speech, it's very possibly that their Jumu'ah is not accepted. So if you are here playing with your cell phone and you're an adult, please stop doing it, because it's not proper and it's disrespectful. Thank you. So the seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect on the day of judgment are the seven types. And we will go into detail more inshaAllah ta'ala. Number one, Imam Adil, a just ruler. And every single one, the ulama said, every single person who has people under him, he, re, he, he is responsible for he is a ruler of that flock, of those people that are under him. Meaning, if you are a supervisor at work, if you are a president of a company, if you are a CEO of a company, and some have even said if you are the father of a household and you have three, four, five, six, seven, X amount of children and a spouse, that you are the ruler of that family. And of course, Min Babi Awla, it pertains to the government, people who are in charge in the government, who have many, many people underneath them and under their authority. And a lot of times, dear brothers and sisters, when we hear being just, we think that we are just, please shut off your cell phones, Allah Hadiq. Can you turn off the adhan, please, on your phone? We should say, if your phone stays on during the khutbah, you get a $500 penalty. Then you will all leave your phones in the car. Let's have a respectful khutbah, please. It's distracting. If you went to the government center to get your duties done, you would not leave your phone on. None of us do. Jazakumullah. Being a just ruler, sometimes we think 
it's something very easy to do. Oh, mashallah, if I was the ruler, you would see I would be very just. Right. That's what all the rulers said before you. Look at our masjid, for example. And I'm not talking about this masjid or any masjid in particular, but there's a lot of this in many of the masjid that we go to. We come and we talk about the persecution that's going on in our lands back home, dictatorship. And a lot of times when we come and we are an imam or a facilitator or a sheikh or a someone who is responsible in the masjid, we do more than the dictators back home. And wallahi, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but we hear a lot of problems in our masajid. And maybe your masjid in particular is one of the very few who does not have that problem. That's why I come and do khutbah here, just so you know. So no one leaves here saying, I am talking about Sheikh Bashir or anyone, Hafizahullah. I love you guys for the sake of Allah. And that's why I come to this masjid in particular. There's only a three or four that I go to. I don't go to all of them. So I'm not misunderstood. But in, we've seen in a lot of masajid, there's a lot of rupture, there's a lot of disconnection, there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of arguing, bickering amongst people who are running the masajid, whether they are the boards, whether the, the board is having problems with the mashayikh, so forth and so on. So a lot of us, we complain about dictatorship back home, and if they gave us a chance to be dictators, we would do a good job at it. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا So a just ruler, and this is why he is the first one on the list. يقول الإمام أحمد رحمه الله لو كانت لي دعوة مستجابة لا تركتها أو لا سخرتها للحاك لأن إذا صلح الحاكم صلحة الرعية رحمه الله. إمام أحمد ابن حنبل إمام السنة والجماعة. For those who understand the method of Hanbali comes from. Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah He said if I have one dua that I know it will be accepted I will make that dua for the ruler Because if the ruler is just And if the ruler is good And if the ruler is godly And if the ruler worships Allah properly The rest of the people will be godly The rest of the people will be straight The rest of the people will benefit from the blessings Of being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And why did the ummah of Islam fall? It only fell because of the injustice of the rulers and the injustice of the people underneath them. A just ruler. It's a very, very important role to have. And it's a very, very important role to practice. And like we said, for you who is sitting at home and you are the ruler of your household, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, each one of us, about those who we are ruling. كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ All of you are shepherds and each one of you is responsible for their flock. Number two. شَبٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ a young man or a young woman who was raised or from an early age, they worshipped Allah. They were praying, they were doing siyam, they practiced sadaq as much as possible. And we see in this day and age, it's very hard to find those young men and women that practice Islam properly and worship Allah properly. And this is why al jaza min jins al-amal, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this young person such a high status in Jannah because at the time of their youth and their young age, they have a fire ignited inside of them. It's easy for them to follow their desires. It's easy for them to fall into the haram. It's either easy for them to do all of the evil things that especially in the West that we see going on. We ask Allah to protect our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children. It is not easy for them to live in the West. It is not easy for us, us older folks, to live in the West. Wallahi al-Azim. Shabun nasha'a fi ta'atillah. 
a young man or a woman who was raised from an early age and worshipped Allah properly would be under the, the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ And a man who his heart is attached to the masajid, that they want to come and pray in jama'ah, that they do as much as they can to come and pray in the jama'ah. And I know a few brothers, Zazahum Khair, and there's probably many here, alhamdulillah, that when they go to buy a house, or going to rent a house, or going to live somewhere, the first thing they ask about is where is the masjid? The first thing they ask is where is the masjid? They're looking for to be close to the masjid. Do you think this person, Allah is not going to bless them when they're looking for a house in the house they buy or rent? Because they're looking to be close so they can come and pray as many prayers as possible at the masjid. Alhamdulillah. In her, in here, when we say رَجُلٌ قَلْبُ مُعَلَّقُ masajid, because Salat al-Jama'ah is in some narrations or some scholars say that it's mandatory upon the men. Some say it's فَرْضْ كِفَاءِ إِذَا قَامَ بِهِ الْبَعْضِ سَقَطَ عَنِ الْبَقِيَّةِ But it's not mandatory for the women to pray at the masajid or in the jama'ah, just so we're on the same page, inshallah. Number four, and the time passes by fast, mashallah. Number four, Rajulani tahabba fillah. Ijtama'a ala hubbi wa iftaraqa alayh. And two men, and we said two persons, two women could be as well in this case. لِأَنَّ النِّسَاءِ يَأْتِينَ تَبَعًا Two men, they love each other for the sake of Allah. We're going to meet at the masjid. We're going to meet at so-and-so place. We love each other for the sake of Allah. I don't want to do any business dealings with you. I'm not talking to you because I want to benefit from you. You're not talking to me because you need or want to benefit from me, so forth and so on. Our relationship is we met at the door of the masjid and we bump into each other how many times at the masjid. We see ourselves helping the masjid and we have this bond for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is for the brothers and for the sisters alike. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will have these types or categories of people be under the shade of His throne on the day that the sun is so close from the heads of human beings and that they will be dripping in sweat. And each one of us will be dripping in sweat according to His deeds. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, some will be in sweat to their ankles, some will be to their knees, some will be to their waist, some will be to their chest, some will be to their necks. And then some of us, they will be covered in sweat from head to toe. And all of this is according to the deeds in what we do for the sake of Allah. Number five, a man who is called by, by a woman who, has, who is a beautiful woman who has status, whether she has money or she, has, uh, she is his uh, superior at work or she is someone who is in politics. And the best example for this is the example of Yusuf alayhi salam. عندما دعتهم رأة العزيز فقال معاذ الله إن ربي أحسن مثوي إنه لا يفلح الظالم Yusuf السلام, was called by the wife of the king at the time or the minister of the time and she was beautiful and she was passionate about Yusuf السلام, and she called him to herself and he said Allah." this is the best example and in this day and age Alhamdulillah, in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know of people who have fallen into these categories and sorts of situations and they said, Ma'adh Allah. And there's a story of a man who a woman approached him and she had status and she was beautiful and he said, I will not do it. And at the end, she ended up asking his hand in marriage, Alhamdulillah. So he got the benefit of the dunya and the benefit of the akhirah. وَمَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْهِ 
Every time you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with that which is greater, better in value. And you will not regret, ever, ever regret leaving something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abadan. Number six, a man or a woman, a person who gives sadaqah with their right hand to the point that the left hand does not see, meaning that they give it in complete secrecy, that nobody knows. In Ali radiallahu an, we have narrations that talk about Ali radiallahu an, he used to give to so many poor people in the Medina, he used to go and walk around and they did not know it was Ali radiallahu an until he had passed away. And then the people started questioning, why aren't we getting that sadaqah that's been coming for many, many months or many, many years? Radiallahu anhum wa This is the type of secrecy. And yes, to open a little parentheses, a lot of time that we get, for instance, at the Masajid, we do fundraising. And we do it to do what? To build, expand, or keep the maintenance in our masajid because there is no awqaf here, there is no hukuma, there is no dawla that takes care of, there's no government that takes care of our masajid. We have to take care of the masajid ourselves out of our own pockets. And it's a small price to pay for all the benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every single one of us in here. We all came from a different country with almost nothing in our pockets. I am one of those people. Even though I was born here, when I came back from back home, I came with nothing in my pocket. Except for the language, alhamdulillah, I could speak the language. Tayyib, and many of us came with nothing, and alhamdulillah, we have homes, and we have cars, and we have abundance. So don't forget that this is a small price for us to pay to keep our masajid running optimally and in good health. For what? Not only for us, for our youth, for our children. If our masajids fall, we will fall, and by consequence, for sure, our children will fall. So when you're asked to give sadaqah in plain sight, and to help the masajid, and to encourage others, please do so. And don't say, I'm going to be the one who will be on the, under the shade of the throne of Allah because I'm going to give in secret. And then you go home, and your wife talks you out of it. Then you don't give in secret, you don't give in non-secret and then you end up not given anything. Or the sister goes home and her husband talks her out of it. Because in America you have to be, it's a democracy, you have to be fair to the women as well. صح? So this type of giving is encouraged as the Prophet ﷺ did this type of giving when he needed to make, to get money and to buy um, weapons for some of the battles that the Prophet Sallallahu and you all know the hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he came he brought all of his money Umar radiallahu anhu he came and he brought half of his money and the Prophet Sallallahu he asked Abu Bakr ماذا تركت لعيالك يا أبا بكر قال تركت لهم الله ورسوله تركت لهم الله ورسوله and then he asked Umar radiallahu anhu he said what did you leave for your family he said تركت لهم نصف مالي Abu Bakr, he was asked by the Prophet ﷺ when he brought the money and he put it in front of the Prophet ﷺ, in front of all the Sahaba at the masjid. And he said, the Prophet ﷺ asked Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? He said, I left them Allah and his messenger, meaning I brought all of my wealth. Do you know that Abu Bakr did not die poor? He died a very rich man. Even though he gave all of his money to the Prophet ﷺ. Anything that you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will replenish it and He is the best of sustainers. Subhana. Don't ever fear of giving sadaqah, dear brothers and sisters. Don't ever fear of giving sadaqah. Even if you think you don't have money. Those who don't have money and need money should give sadaqah more than those who have an abundance. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Rubba dinarin sabaqa alfa dinar. That one dollar, for instance, as an example, the dinar, is better in sadaq than a thousand dinars or a thousand dollars. Because the person who gives a dollar, 
he needs that dollar very bad and he gives it, he will have more reward than the person who has so much abundance, even if they give a thousand, it doesn't bother them. It's about your intention. It's about your sacrifice. It's not about how much. No, ever. It's always been about the intention. The sadaqa. يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام الصدقة برهان الصدقة برهان So Umar رضي الله عنه he came and he put the money in front of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said Oh Umar what did you leave for your family? He said I left them half of my wealth الله أكبر When we're having fundraiser here I would love to see who's going to give half of his wealth or she who will give half of her wealth I'm not of those people we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can become like that. But imagine, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he brought all of his wealth. We hear this hadith, we hear this story many times, and it's authentic. Do we ever sit and think about the depth and the importance of what it means to give all of your wealth or to give half of your wealth? And what's very unfortunate that the Muslims are only to give 2.5% of zakat of their wealth and most Muslims in the world don't pay zakat. It has been calculated if the people in the Arab world alone, not all of the Muslims, gave their zakat, there will not be a poor person on the face of the earth. Not a poor Muslim on the face of the earth. Be very careful, dear brothers and sisters, about being too tight and too stingy. Whatever you give for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you many times over. True story happened to me and a brother who came to me and he said, I'm having some hard financial times. And I said, why don't you give sadaqah? And I went. Six months down the road, a year, Allahu Alam, a, a period longer than that, I was talking to the same brother after Salat al-Fajr, I remember. I was sitting in my car. And he was talking about having some hardships financially. And I said, brother, why don't you give sadaqah? So what did he say? He says, it's easier, or it's easy for you, or whoever has money, I should say, to give, but I don't have anything to give. I said, brother, that's the problem because you don't have anything, you, or you don't have anything because you're not given anything. It works the other way around. You say, la ilaha illallah, thumma Allah yudkhiluk al jannah. Allah doesn't show you the jannah and say, please say, la ilaha illallah. What's the purpose? When you say, la ilaha illallah on yaqeen and you believe it, Allah will show you the jannah. It doesn't work the opposite. You give because you believe in Allah, Allah will give you back. It doesn't work the other way around. And we've seen most people who have abundance are the ones who never give. In general. And they only give if they can get something out of it. So sadaqah is one of the easy things. As hard, as easy as it is, it's very hard for one to give. It's very hard. And sometimes I talk to my family members and especially the women in my family members, whether my daughter, my wife, so forth and so on. When they come and they ask me they want to buy something, what do I tell them? Allah is my witness from above seventh heaven. I say, why don't you ever come to me and ask to give these poor people sadaqah or to help a family or to do, you only want to buy, 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 buy. Why don't you think about others and try to give? So now every three or four times they ask and then they ask to help others. Alhamdulillah, we have to start somewhere, صح? And after they listen to this, they're going to stop asking me to buy anything. Because we have enough clothes and enough food for 10 lifetimes, alhamdulillah. And if it's successful, I'll let you know the next year when I come to do khutbah or whatever, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Tayyip, aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfir. 
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه اما بعد سو نمبر 7 ذا لاست وان ان شاء الله رجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه وهنا رجل او امراه a man or a woman a person they remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they were alone so tears came down their eyes whilst they remembered Allah while they were remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for those of you who drive or have driven long distances at night by yourself and as they say in business terms when all you see is the knuckles in front of you because you're driving you can only see your knuckles on the steering wheel and it's just you and quiet it's just you and tranquility you're on the road there's nobody on the freeway or highway or you wake up in the middle of the night and everyone is sleeping or you come to the masjid the half an hour or an hour before everyone else whatever the circumstance that you are alone nobody's around you nobody sees you and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bounty that he has bestowed upon you and you start to weep and we don't do enough of this our hearts have become hardened by all the fitan and desires and the dunya that's surrounding us that a lot of times we hear the ayah of the quran and we know what it means and it's like it falls on deaf ears Imagine how many years we pray, alhamdulillah, and how many years we give sadaqah and zakat and make siyam, and how many people have made hajj, and how many years we've worshipped Allah, a lot of us, and unfortunately, how many Muslims who will worship Allah will end up in hellfire even if it's temporarily, and we ask, we are not from amongst those who go to hellfire, qulu ameen. We know this as a fact. The Muslim does not stay forever in hellfire. They will come out. And there's many, many narrations of people coming out of the hellfire who were Muslims. As the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned those who come on the day of judgment. And they have mountains and mountains of hasanat. Mountains of hasanat. وَيَأْخُذُونَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ كَمَا تَأْخُذُونَ that these people, they have mountains of hasanas, they even make qiyam al-layl. Doesn't get any better than that. But the Prophet ﷺ said that they will be punished. And the Sahaba were surprised and they said, why? فَإِذَا خَلَوْ بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ انْتَهَكُوهَا That when they are alone, that they do evil deeds when they are alone and no one sees them. How many people will do good deeds and they will end up being punished because of what they say behind other people's backs, what they do behind the backs of others when they think no one sees them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees them. It's very important and always compare what we are doing to the Sahara of Fir'aun. Look at the Sahara, the Sorcerers of Fir'aun, in the morning they were kuffar, fighting Musa alayhi salam. And in the afternoon, they were shuhada'a abrar. Yadkhuloon al-jannata, lam ya'budu allaha, wa lam yusallu, wa lam yuzakku. They did nothing, they did no deeds, they did no salat, they did no zakat, they did nothing. But they end up going to paradise. So please, dear brothers and sisters, if you're listening to me, the deeds that you do during the day or you work so hard on attaining, don't let them go away easily out of your pocket. Don't let them slip away. We are all very guilty of that. I am the first one, wallahi. We ask Allah that He beautifies our manners. The manners are very important as well. 
what we say, how we say, what we do, how we do is very important. Islam teaches us everything. But a lot of times we decide not to live according to what Islam wants. We try or we work very hard, I should say, at doing the opposite of what Islam says by following our cultures, by following our desires, by following what our spouses want, by following what our children want. And a lot of times our spouses, maybe they don't have the right vision. Our children, of course, are young, so they don't have the experience. They don't have the vision. But for you men who are looking at me, you are responsible. Allah is going to ask every single one of us about our family. Dear youth, dear young men and women, and especially the men, when you go to ask for a sister's hand, look for someone who will help elevate your deen. Don't marry somebody because they're beautiful. After being with them for six days, or maybe six hours, you will no, no longer find them beautiful. Guaranteed if their akhlaq are not nice, if they are not worshiping Allah properly, if they have bad mannerisms, if they look at you when they're upset and they frown, because that's why you married her, for her to frown at you. Be very specific. Look for the content. Look for the context, because that's what's going to last. Ask anyone who's married a beautiful woman, and you'll see that most people who marry, beautiful or non-beautiful, they have the same problems after X amount of months of marriage. Not years, not centuries. I'm not saying don't marry beautiful, no. But make sure that the context and the content is proper and it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a little nasiha for you who are all probably the age of my sons or the age of my younger brother, inshaAllah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Asallah an yaghfir lana dhunubana, wa israfana fi amrina, wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Rabbana la tu'akhadna bima fa'alna fi anfusina min safahin wa dhulmin wa idwanin wa jah. Allahum aghfir lana taqsirana fi ikhwanina fi kulli makan. Allahumma innahum hufatun fahmilhum wa innahum uratun faksuhum wa innahum jiyaun fa'atimhum. Anta rabbuna wa rabbuhum wa anta a'lamu bi ahwalihim minna. Allahumma rabbana aghfir lana taqsirana fihim. Allahumma rabbana aghfir lana taqsirana fihim. Allahumma aghfir lana taqsirana fihim. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fa astaghfirun al-ghafur rahim. Wa qum. الى صلاتكم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله